lot of hard surface shapes have repeating details and some of those shapes have repeating details in some circular way. So how do we get that set up so that we don't have to repeat the work we do on one portion multiple times? Plus, what if we quickly change the rotational symmetry so that instead of three sides, we want five, for example? When we first go to add a cylinder into Blender, we might choose a vertex count, the amount of vertices value that we have here, to be divisible by four, so that our resolution, the amount of segments that make up this cylinder, can easily be rotated around and symmetrical in quite a few ways. Here I've got a cap fill of nothing, so there's no polygons at the top or bottom there. And if we take a look from top orthographic with 7 on the numpad, and I'm going to go Alt Z so that I can easily select through the mesh here. Because we have a value divisible by 4, it's really easy to just select a quarter or a half. Actually, let's take just a quarter and Control I to invert the selection there and X to delete all those vertices. And then we could just create any basic bit of detail. Let's say that's the sort of thing we were looking for. It's really easy at this point, since the object origin for this object is still going to be at the center. In fact, let's make that a little clearer and turn on our origins and the 3D cursor. Instead of going Shift D to duplicate, I'm going to instead go Alt D to duplicate, which will create a linked instance where the objects share the exact same mesh information. And then go R and then 90 and then Enter to confirm that. And then I'm going to go Shift R a couple of times to get the last two corners there. And then at this point, I can just take this one, take this bit of detail, for example, and we'll see that it's actually, as we edit one quarter of it, all the quarters are getting updated at the same time. If we wanted a cylinder which repeated around more like five times, we might need to choose something which is more divisible by five. So maybe something like 30. And then for every six faces, Let's get six of these and invert the selection, delete those. And then now what we do is come to Alt D and then R to rotate. And it would be somewhere around here. Now I'm just going to drop it into about there because we don't have to be perfectly precise with the maths on this. We can actually figure this out by just going 360 divided by five. And we know that's 72. So at that point, I'm just going to go Shift R until we complete the circle. And then at that point, when we edit one, all the others get edited. We don't actually have to think about the maths of it whatsoever though, since we can actually just model our detail where it might be simpler on a flat plane and then use our modifiers to get what we need. So let's take a look at that. Let's take this flat plane, which I've subdivided and just convert this into a cylinder. So I'm going to tab back out into object mode and let's add a modifier, a simple deform, and then I want the bend option. And now if we set the axis to be any one of these three, we're not really getting that cylinder. So what I'm going to need to do is go Shift A and add in an empty for which to control that with. So I'm going to switch back to the plane and then choose that empty. Now the basic idea here is that we want this empty to have the Y axis of it shooting out perpendicular from this geometry. So we're going to need to see that a little bit better. So I'm going to come back over to the empty settings and display that actually as arrows. So we can see our Y is shooting off down that way. So let's rotate all around X. I'm going to need to rotate 90 degrees. So I'm just going to type in 90 in the numpad and press enter. And now we can see the plane is beginning to actually rotate around and resemble a little bit more of a cylinder. So let's come over to the modifier settings and take the angle here all the way to a full circle. 360. Now when we do that, it's basically rotated it round the wrong way. So I'm going to set this actually to minus 360. I'm going to grab both of these actually and rotate them so this cylinder is standing up. Rotate X 90. And then if we take this and tab into edit mode again, we can see we still have access to that flat plane. And we don't need to be able to see this empty anymore. So I'm just going to switch off the visibility of that in the viewport. So we have access to this flat plane and that might make certain modeling objectives a little bit easier. We could easily just take a part of this and move that over there like this. Maybe we might like to take a few of these faces, inset them in and then just extrude them back. Something just super simple like that for now. Now it's all very flat shaded. So let's right click and shade that as smooth. And if we take a look around the back, we can still clearly see a very flat, hard edge. So to help with this, let's use the weld modifier. And now that goes away. And then let's add a subdivision surface modifier. Take that up to two levels of subdivision in the viewport. And then from there, we could continue to work. 
Now we can work flat like this, or we could come over to the deform and click this last button that we have on our modifier settings here, which is just going to allow us to actually edit with the modifications in place. So there, for example, we might want to go control R and reinforce this edge on the other side. And it feels very much like just working on a regular model. Maybe let's just add another loop in here and another one there. Now this is just that one version of the geometry just being rotated around. A good way to get some rotational symmetry here is simply have at the start of all this an array modifier. I'm going to put that right to the top using this little arrow here and let's take our fixed count up to three. Now notice that it was getting wider but also notice that we're now getting three of those little indents that we made. Taking a look in wireframes maybe a little bit easier. So that's super quick and easy to just choose the amount of rotational symmetry we want there. So for example, let's just quickly take that to five and it's done. If we want to change the overall size of it, the overall radius of it, we could just scale it. In this case, that would be S and then shift Z just to eliminate the Z axis from being scaled. And now we've made it a little bit of a narrow diameter now, but maybe we might want to go back to this detail and maybe scale that down, square that out a little bit more or whatever we like. So that was the cylinder. Let's take a look at making a more of a disc with rotational symmetry. So I'm gonna go shift A and add in a mesh plane. Let's move that off to the side. Tab into edit mode, right click to subdivide. Gonna set that all the way up to 10. And then I'm gonna come over to the modifier, bring in our trusty simple deform, change that to bend, change the axis to Z. So it's rotating as we look at it down here from the z-axis. And let's take that all the way up to 360. Now you can probably tell that that's overlapping quite badly there. So all we need to do is just press G. And in this case, I've middle clicked and gestured towards the left and right just to lock it down on the y-axis there. And I can just drop it in about there. We don't need to be particularly precise about it. We can scale right where we are to change the thickness of this. And depending on how far we move it down the y-axis in this case, we'll depend on its general overall radius. Now at this point we're already able to just tap into edit mode, find our flat plane and then maybe just drag down this edge loop G and then Z to create some inner detail there and for the outer detail here maybe I'll just go E to extrude, Z to lock it on the Z axis and drop it to about there and we can already see some kind of disk starting to take shape. I think we're going to need to right click and shade this smooth though. Let's give it some subdivision surface levels. So maybe about two and notice where it's wrapped all the way around on itself. We need to weld that. So I'm going to add the weld modifier and make that above the subdivision surface modifier. Just collapse that a little bit and I'll also collapse this and then we're ready to just continue editing. So I can use control R to reinforce this edge loop and tighten this up if we want or I'll alt left select this one, just go control shift R instead. And that way we'll automatically create our offset loops required to tighten that edge up. I think I'll take this internal loop and just slide it to the left a little bit more. So if I take a look from an orthographic view, we can see the actual profile of what it is that we've created there. As we had before, we have the option to, instead of modeling in a flat plane like this, we could just enable this feature to edit on the cage to edit in place where it's gonna feel a lot more like just working with regular geometry. And any changes that we make are potentially a little bit more intuitive. Now notice that this isn't really creating any rotational symmetry. It's just that one bit of geometry being bent all around. So as again, as we did before, we just create this array and put that to the very top. I notice with a fixed count of two, we have two of those little details now and we could just choose how many times we want to see that rotational symmetry. I'm gonna choose three. And after doing that, it changes its overall size. So we might wanna go in and change the general scale of it. All right, so I'm going to collapse this bit. And for the simple deform itself, I'm gonna turn off that edit on the cage option and just edit as we see it here and take those faces that we just lowered. Let's just check we're on vertex mode though. So G, Z, hold control, indicate to that vertex. Alt A to deselect everything. And then we have a nice clean disc ready for some more deliberate rotational symmetry. I think I'll just take these five polygons there, I to inset them, E to extrude them down. And let's take a look at that. That's looking pretty good. I think I'm going to grab the edges just there 
and just slide them in double tap G somewhere around there now I can see in the top left just around this kind of area <laughs> that it's around 0.8 that I want it so I'm going to type that in exactly and when it comes to the other edge that we have on the opposite side I'm going to do basically the same thing so this time instead of minus I'm just going to go for the plus let's take a look at that so I'm getting this nice little fading in detail and something that would be trickier to do is just sort of fading it in from these sides as well but with it flat like this it's way easier you just select these edge loops and scale them towards each other on the y-axis so s and then y Let's check that out and that's working pretty well. Something else that we could do, and I'm gonna use the cage in this case, is just take some of these areas in between the notches. So maybe that amount. And I'm gonna take a look from top orthographic, take a look in wireframe, one for vertex select. I'm gonna shift select over more of the vertices that I want just to make sure we get them all. And from there, I'm gonna turn off the edit on the cage actually. And what I'm going to do is just squish them in. So I'm gonna press G, and then Y and we can see what's happening very very slightly parts of it are being flattened out but I think this edge loop is in the way so I'm going to select it and X to dissolve it and this edge loop I'm going to slide further in as well and then I'm going to go back to vertex select and take these vertices that we've squished in a little bit and do that a little bit more and then we can see the effect of that so let's just take a look at how far we want that to go and I think I'm happy with that and here I've jumped forward to show the result of just a few more very basic modeling ideas. At this point, we could just go on forever, really, adding whatever details we like, safe in the knowledge that all of this is neatly getting automatically duplicated and rotated around.